In this video, let's talk about how to make new hobbies. I'm a person who had a very one track life for a long time and I've had to find out how to make new hobbies myself. So I wanna share some tips here today that I know can help anyone because they've definitely helped me. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Dan Blewett. I'm a four-time author, I'm a YouTuber here, I'm an online entrepreneur, and I'm a former pro baseball player. And that is the reason that I've honestly struggled to find new hobbies because I played pro baseball until I was 30 years old. And when I retired, I didn't know what else to do. I mean, honestly, most of my life was devoted to baseball. And so during the season, it's an incredibly rigorous schedule, 140 games in 160 days. In the off season, I had my own training. I owned a baseball academy, so I was helping other kids pursue their sports dreams. And I loved it. It was great. But I was very much wrapped up in this one sort of package of me being an athlete. And so once I was done, I had so much extra time on my hands and I really just didn't know what to do with it. One of the big problems here, and, and I live this as an online entrepreneur, is you don't wanna just spend your whole day staring at your screens. You don't wanna just be flipping through Instagram or TikTok. You don't wanna just be watching Netflix on your computer. That's a way to a pretty lonely life, to be honest. What you want is to be socially connected and you wanna have things IRL, like in real life, things that you actually do with your hands, you know, out there in the real world, those really make you feel good and they start to really help build connections with other people and in the community. Because when you are passionate about your hobbies, other people will be passionate about it with you. And that's a gr also a great way to make, meet friends. Okay, so real quick, I'll share four of my new hobbies. Number one is houseplants. I own zero houseplants back in 2020. Today I have like 105. And that honestly makes me feel <laughs> a little embarrassed. Um, they do space out. My apartment is a little bit of a jungle, but I really like learning about plants and it's been a cool journey. I, I really genuinely enjoy my plants, even though I do feel silly about it, but it's also a thing that I own. I like plants. I like watching them grow. I like learning about them. I like collecting different ones and unique ones. It's cool. Number two, I started playing the banjo. Um, it's my dad's old banjo. He was really good at it. And I asked him if I could, you know, take over since he hasn't really been playing in a long time. And I've been making progress and I'm getting better, right? I'm not good, but I'm getting better. I've been playing it for a couple weeks now, but it's fun. It's a challenge and it's fun. Number three, I bought painting supplies and I've screwed around with, you know, painting a little bit and that's been fun. I haven't done a ton of it, but I like art and I like the challenge of mixing paint and seeing if I can do a lot of this stuff. So that's been fun. And number four, I've taken salsa dancing lessons and that's something that's still ongoing and that really puts me out of my comfort zone, but that's kind of what I wanted in new hobbies. If you have a growth mindset about it that you wanna be challenged, that's a great way. So those are some of my hobbies. Let's get into how you can start to build some of your own. Number one, sign up for like a, you know, local things to do newsletter. I sign up for a couple of these here. I live in the DC area and you know, they come to my inbox and I check the stuff that's going on, the activities in real life. And a lot of times things pop up that I haven't thought of. One thing that's on my list to try is like a pottery class, ceramics class. A, I love houseplants and you know, it's one of those things where I could like maybe make my own planters and I just think working with my hands is something that I used to do when I was a kid and I used to actually weld and do car work. Um, I really enjoyed working on this old car that I had in high school and just anything that to work with my hands is interesting. But anyway, I found ceramic class ads in one of these weekly newsletters of things to do. And I was like, oh, that actually sounds fun because it's not easy to sometimes sit down and remember everything that might be available to you or know what might be available in your area. So sign up for a couple of local lists and, and read those newsletters and see what's going on in your area and then try things, say yes to things and see like, hey, if it sounds interesting, just go for it. Number two, ask your friends and new people that you meet what their hobbies are, especially if you wanna make new friends, which that's also been a journey of mine as an adult leaving like the baseball world, this very niche world. When you wanna meet new people, sometimes it's hard to know what to talk about, but if you ask people, what do they do with their spare time? Like what do they do as hobbies? That's a great way to say, oh man, you like ceramics? I've been actually looking, what pottery like studios would you suggest getting into? Oh, I have 105 houseplants, you know, me too, how fun. You know, there's all these different ways that you can just start to like really branch off in conversation and get to know people while also learning what other things are fun to do in town. So ask people, your friends, hit them up, be a little vulnerable and say, hey, what kind of stuff are you doing for fun? I'm looking for new hobbies, what would you suggest? Number three, drop your preconceptions about what other people will think about your hobbies. I'm a former athlete, like I'm kind of a masculine guy. That's the world that I come from. I have a million houseplants. 
that makes me feel a little weird, but then I stopped feeling weird about it because I know that I genuinely like it and my apartment looks cool and I like having all the green around, like I own it. So you can be a masculine dude if that's your identity and you can go painting, you can make pottery, you can do any of these things and just own it. Don't worry about what other people think. If your friends don't do artsy stuff or they don't do whatever it is, who cares? You don't have to do what all your buddies do. You don't have to just go out hunting or shooting or fishing or whatever it might be. And those things are great. If those are your hobbies, that's totally fine. But understand that if you want to branch out, allow yourself the opportunity to branch out. Don't let other people's thoughts about what you're doing and their judgments slow you down from trying new hobbies. My next tip, stick with things. So for me with the banjo, this has been my second go round with the banjo. I started to try to play it back in the fall and you know, I like did a couple days and I liked it, but I was really busy and a lot of other stuff going on. I just didn't feel like I had the passion at that moment to really dive in. But I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I like doing that. I like the idea of being able to play this. It's my dad's banjo. So that's special to me. There was something there. And so I waited. And then, you know what? Recently the time felt right. And I jumped in. I'm like, you know, what? if you jump back in, let's stick with it. So I've practiced almost every day, not every day, but almost every day. And the progress has been steady and it's been exciting to see the progress. A lot of times when you pick up new hobbies, you're not, I mean, most of the time, you're just not going to be very good at them. And I was not good at banjo. I'm still not good at banjo, but I'm seeing little progress every day. So you have to allow yourself the chance to get better because if you want to like jump in and you're awesome at everything, that's just like not the way life is, right? You're not going to be good at everything right when you start. So just remember that if you feel like you have a good interest in something, give yourself a week, give yourself two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever. I don't know how long that activity you know, in hypothetical land is going to take you, but just make sure you give yourself a fair shake at being good at it, at getting, getting good at it before you give it the ultimate judgment. Cause no one loves doing things that they suck at, right? We get that. I'm not a good banjo player right now, but I know that I'm making progress. So if you feel like, Hey, I can definitely get there. And then I'm going to really enjoy this. Once I really get the hang of it, that's a great mindset to have. My next tip, go places. So even if you're not sure what your hobbies are, just start to get out into, into the public. Go to a museum, go to some other like public activity. Tonight, I'm gonna go to a, a movie in like the park. Does that have anything to do with my hobbies? No, not really, but it gets you into the social fabric and it gets you into this idea that you wanna be out doing things and hobbies are doing things. So putting yourself in this mindset of not just being in your house by yourself where you're just gonna be scrolling through screens, get out in the real world, go hike, go meet up with friends, go you know, take a camp chair or a blanket to a park, you know, go to a museum, go to a free event, go to, just go out and do things and it's gonna jumpstart this energy to continue to be out there in the public blossoming, doing new things. I promise you that's a big thing, giving yourself the social energy to go try new stuff. And my last tip is volunteer somewhere. And this also seems sort of like beside the point, right? But it's not. When you go out and volunteer your time, A, you're gonna feel good helping, giving back to people less fortunate. That's a really great thing to do, but it's also just gonna give you a, a new chance to meet good-hearted people. And you can just start to connect with them and say, hey, what do you do in your spare time? Like I mentioned, talking to people, especially new people who aren't the same as you, who aren't like your, your old clique of friends where you all do the same stuff. When you can branch out and meet new folks and take an interest in them and ask what it is that they fill their life with that fills them with joy, it's going to lead you in a good direction, right? And volunteering is also a hobby. You know, it could be something simple. You know, there's like soup kitchens, there's mentorship things, there's like all sorts of nonprofits in your area. You can easily find something that's in your wheelhouse and not every charity is going to be right for you. There are some that make me feel uncomfortable that I'm not just that well suited for. And there's others that I felt like this is a really good fit where I enjoy doing this. And so you might have to try someone for size, but if you go out and volunteer, you're going to meet new people that you can take an interest in who can sort of help to piece together this idea of like what new things might I be interested in and how can other people you know, suggest things and share their interest with me. The other people aspect in developing new hobbies, I don't think can be understated. So make sure you are leveraging that. Get out into, get out into society, meet new people, and then you're gonna find new hobbies from them. So hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, I've been on the same journey as someone who was very one track for such a long time in my career, which I don't regret. I've just had to sort of make up for this. I didn't have all this time in my 20s to be trying new things after work because I was chasing my dream and I was just doing the same thing every day and trying to be world-class at it. 
And so I've had to catch up and find hobbies and find ways to fill time. And it hasn't been easy. And I know for you out there, especially if you're a guy, it's not that easy. Guys aren't as social. We're not as keen to like jump out and try new things, especially if they seem different from what us and our friends typically do. So make sure if you want new hobbies that you allow yourself to dive in, try new stuff. Don't worry about what other people think. If it makes you happy, then keep it, all right? So leave me a comment below. What are your hobbies? What have you done to find new hobbies? And what tips might you share for our community here? Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you here in the next video.